Hi guys and welcome to this video which is a short discussion about the data collection and uh, the way we're going to uh, enable you to comment on the uh, experiment 5.4 and 5.5 uh, which we are going to start later this week. So uh, 5.4 is all about 18 oxygen and 62 nickel. Uh, and uh, you may have already seen a, a brief uh, overview of the reasons for doing this experiment. Um, and uh, Brian Alveston has helped us create this uh, dashboard here in uh, freeboard.io. Uh, it's an online uh, system for enabling you to create uh, Internet of Things uh, data representations on the web. And let me just run you through some of the, the information that you can see here on the screen. Um, the active temperature and null temperature you'll recognize from previous experiments. Um, uh, that's a thermocouple. And we have the optress temperature here. And currently this is set to the hottest nine average pixels in the whole field of view of the optress camera. That's uh, the optress PI160. And then we have the heater coil drive, and currently we're feeding the power, uh, volts, and amps. Uh, we've just got to uh, hook up the uh, watt hours uh, total energy uh, since start of experiment. Then down here we have the ambient temperature for reference, and also we have this uh, sodium iodide detector temperature. This may allow us to compensate for drift if the sodium iodide head gets warm. Um, more on the sodium iodide detector, there will be an output of region of interest at 511 keV. This is the, the one that we hope to see uh, in uh, this uh, 5.4 experiment uh, and potentially also in 5.5. But anyway, uh, this needs to be hooked up still. Uh, it's pretty much uh, done, uh, but we hope we'll be able to get that hooked up tomorrow. And so this is going to give you the counts, counts per minute and so on. Um, for this particular uh, gamma that we'll be looking for, which is the uh, decay of 18 fluorine uh, that's created by a PN reaction from 18 oxygen over 109 minutes or so, it'll decay uh, with a 633 uh, positron, which hits an electron and annihilates and gives 25 and 111 keV photons, which we should see outside the cell. Uh, assuming PN Tully uh, is able to create these 6.7 mega electron volt protons. Uh, the spare counter here may be another Geiger counter, uh, I'll sort of back up. This Geiger counter has uh, is a modified GMC320+, Plus, which we identified in 5.2 as pretty useless for our needs. Uh, and we've added an LN7317, which was used uh, in uh, GS5.3. Uh, up here you'll see the pressure, uh, and this is a PSI absolute. So you'll be able to see it when that's a, a vacuum. Uh, and when we've got pressure. Uh, here's our helium-3 detector. This one's not hooked up at the moment. This is the second helium-3 uh, detector. Um, the f uh, sorry, the first, but it's not hooked up. The second helium-3 uh, detector is uh, hooked up at the moment. In fact, no, maybe they're not, both not hooked up. We've just got some static values there. Anyway, they will be. They, they have been. And down here is our six lithium iodide detector uh, for neutrons also. And uh, this is operating at the moment. Okay. So this is a, a brief overview and uh, maybe give some more information on how to read this better. Now, if you go to the temperature, power, and pressure chart, uh, we've got uh, pretty much all of this hooked up at the moment, except the sodium iodide detector down here. That's the sodium iodide uh, temperature. Uh, but again, uh, some of the some of the details, but graphing, uh, real-time graphing for um, uh, the power here and for the uh, optress temperature, hottest spot, uh, hottest nine pixels, the active uh, side of the uh, glow stick, the null side of the glow stick, and the pressure down here, this red line. Um, I will show you how to really use these graphs and export graphs and zoom around uh, in another video. Uh, the second uh, graph set is for the neutrons, uh, detectors, guide counters and gamma counter uh, uh, region of interest. 
Uh, so you can see over here the uh, range for the six lithium iodide, the helium-3 detectors, two of those, the uh, guide counters, the 7317 and potentially another just standard guide tube, and the 500 mkV region of interest. And you can scale all these and zoom them around, and as I said, we're going to be able to show you that in uh, another video. Now, in addition to that, we'll have on the live stream, uh, we will have uh, the overview camera, which is going to be GoPro, so that should up the quality on, on the live stream overhead camera. We'll have the bubble cam, and this time we've got uh, three uh, bubble cams, uh, sorry, three bubble tech uh, neutron detectors. Uh, a thermal and and two faster neutron ones, two different energies. One is probably out of its design life, uh, but uh, we couldn't get hold of a, a new one in time. However, Mi 356 sent his on courier, and so we have that. That's great. Um, there will be Optri Optris video uh, uh, image, which we'll also be saving as a Ravi. Uh, so that can be um, viewed at a little different time and people can analyze temperatures of various parts of the cell during the run. Then we'll have our muon app, which I've been explaining over the last few days. And again, these will be uh, saving uh, any muon and uh, uh, electrons created from Compton scattering um, into uh, their traces. So muons create straight traces and uh, uh, electrons from Compton, Compton scattering create curved uh, sort of worm, wiggly worm traces. So those are the ones to look out for um, uh, in the experiment. And then uh, we'll have a live internal chat uh, for the team, uh, which I hope to get onto the live stream as well, so you can see our conversations, um, uh, which will be internal. Uh, and then uh, we'll have a, a roaming camera, which will allow us to look at the uh, Autec equipment, showing the lithium iodide counts um, and uh, other aspects uh, that you might call out for us to go and have a look at. Okay, now in terms of crowd interaction... Uh, we have had uh, difficulties in the past with people getting orphaned on streams because they only run for like four hours or whatever. And so people are asking questions on streams that have ended. And uh, it's very linear on um, uh, both Facebook and, and uh, well, less linear on Facebook, but um, linear on um, the Quantum Heat site in Chat Tango, which we were using before, and also um, on... Um, uh, uh, Google Hangout on air. Uh, so <clears throat> we're going to go to something completely radical. Um, it's something that I believe probably will see the end of Facebook. That's a very bold claim, but probably end of Facebook and uh, 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 Twitter and, and Reddit and so forth. And that is called Steemit here. Uh, it's a blockchain-based social network. Uh, where rather than uh, some big conglomerate owning the the value of the work that you do for putting blog posts up and commenting on blog posts, the people that create the content in the uh, social network, they actually are the ones that the owners of that, uh, and in theory they are the ones that get the reward. But also, you as contributors, um, both for commenting on and curating, effectively, the content that is posted, you actually get rewards as well in the form of uh, uh, various Steam currencies, some of which are tradable for, for Bitcoin and even uh, straight dollars. So this is really awesome. Um, what it does is... Uh, it store th stores things with blockchain technology, so it cannot be censored. And when things are written into the uh, blockchain, they are there for good. Uh, so uh, we can't even edit things. So this is really good from a scientific point of view. Once it's there, uh, it's done. So, uh, But the great thing is uh, it's advertising free, which we've tried to keep the MFMP uh, since its inception. Um, uh, and... Here's a sort of uh, the science section here, uh, science section, and uh, there are various blog posts in here. I'm just going to choose this one here, and you can see it's very, very nice, much better than Facebook. Uh, the uh, CSS is very nice, and been working at 
how how we can best create the the basic experiment blog post. But at the bottom of the experiment blog post, you can have a nested uh, um, comments and discussions. And really, it's Steemit's got all kinds of different methods with the way that Steemit works, which makes it very difficult for trolls and and shills and and so on to get in there and really damage the discussion and the quality of the discussion because it basically if you, you people are curating and curating affects their ability to take part in the network so if they're negative without any justification i.e they're just criticizing for the sake of criticizing that won't them do them any good uh, within the network so you as a person uh, creating a blog post, if you generate some interest, uh, i.e. there are people engaging with your blog post, uh, <clears throat> the people that create that blog post will get some steam. So that is your way of basically rewarding us for the work that we do on the experiment. But it doesn't have to cost you anything. In fact, it doesn't cost you anything. You're just in your engagement creates value in the network. And the great thing is here, you can see that just by signing up, you'll get $5 of Steam power. Um, and so what I'm asking everyone to do is to sign up and uh, uh, then you, you can engage with the experiment. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. This, this $5 doesn't cost you anything. What's actually happening is it's quite a, a, a really novel uh, idea. Essentially, it's like Bitcoin. Um, people mine uh, blocks and when they find a block, they get awarded a Bitcoin. Uh, in the case of this, there is a new Steam currency <clears throat> mined. And for those that create the content and that comment on the content, every action that creates value in the uh, Steamit network, that gets rewarded with the currency that is mined. Okay, so you actually effectively get rewarded for uh, building the social network. And you can also have ownership tokens. So there's various types of uh, ownership. So this person here, uh, Mr. Boom, uh, here, um, you, this is his uh, blog post, um, his uh, uh, sort of site. Like It's like a Facebook site, but you see no adverts and only his blog posts. So these would be our experiments or, or um, you know, some article that we might publish and uh, this is the one that you've just just seen and you've seen that uh, they are uh, the guys being rewarded like $24 it's, you know we don't expect to cover our experiment costs with this um, but at least we know uh, what what is generating value uh, for uh, people following the project uh, what you can do is you can see the person's wallet <laughs> And this is where it gets a bit complicated. I don't really want to go into it, but you can look into it. Um, uh, but you can see they've got 2,000 value in their, their Steam wallet. There's actually 231 that's locked to the dollar, which they can withdraw into their bank account. And they have this much Steam power. And this is your um, voting power or sort of in the network. So as you post more and you comment more, your power in the network goes up. And so you are able to, um, uh, you know, effectively uh, support uh, work that's done by contributors into the network. So, yeah, that's that's essentially it. So um, what this will allow us to do is to have proper nested uh, commentary. Um, so I can close down this nest here. So if you can imagine four or five people are commenting and then people are responding. That's all I wanted to say. The heat has just come on here. So I'm going to duck out after I just run through this. I don't know if you can hear me because of the, the heater blowing on the left here. But <clears throat> essentially, uh, this should uh, solve the lack of comment threading, to, threading we've had in the past. Um, it also means persistence of contribution. So your uh, intellect uh, gets rewarded. Your engagement with the live open science gets rewarded. But moreover, it's also locked into the blockchain. It can't be deleted uh, after a, a period of time, you, you can't delete it. So, 
Um, this hopefully will prevent um, one of the ways that it prevents uh, shilling and, and, and uh, all kinds of um, non-productive activity. Uh, we, we lose the issues of getting orphaned uh, YouTube comments. Um, and uh, we, we, we use this Chitango in uh, 5.3 and 5.4 very effectively. However, it didn't run on all platforms. It was a little bit difficult to uh, rescale. Uh, so there you go. That's just a little overview. Um, I'll go into some other aspects of what's going on uh, in, a, in another video. But essentially what I'd like you to try and do is to get yourself a Steam it account. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you sign up. A uh, couple of steps. Uh, put in your email, a phone. Um, and uh, get up and set yourself up a Steam account so that you can engage with us uh, during the experiment and uh, do live open science and have it all stored in the blockchain the modern way. Thank you very much.